Should we do away with O-level exam? President Rani Wilkumar Singer during his address to the national ceremony for awarding teacher appointments to national education diploma holders for the 2018-2022 academic year emphasized on quite a few necessary, timely and rather up for debate reforms the education sector should have in order to be, to be up to date with advanced and effective education system of other more developed nations. Among them were the importance of ensuring that children receiving 13 years of school education, the timely necessity of promoting English as a national language and the need of restructuring the GCE ordinary level examination to be more effective. Speaking further on the latter, he acknowledged the rather commonplace conception among the people of all levels being unnecessary and rather ineffective and said that we need to look at other nations such as USA with effective education systems where all of like examinations don't exist for inspirations. Although the education up to university level is free for all in Sri Lanka, the limited resources means the competition to enjoy these facilities is much higher. The popular schools in urban areas are much more sought after and high in demand for their reputation, facilities and good track record in competitive exams. If the government can ensure the equality of opportunity in school education so that any student, irrespective of whether he or she hails from an urban area or a rural area, the demand the popular schools have will eventually die down along with the popularity of all levels and the strain it puts on the students, just like the grade 5 scholarship examination. If the president desires to keep students in school the whole 13 years of school education, the ideal solution would be to take the all levels out of the exam system and start grooming students to select their preferred streams for advanced level from a much earlier age than grade 10 and 11, which means there won't be a competitive exam between the grade 5 scholarship and advanced level for almost 8 years of school. However, if we are to take inspiration from other developed nations, it can't be disregarded that those systems too have some periodical exam competitive exams which have their own benefits. It's easy to look at the ordinary level examination as a white elephant since many students it is not necessarily a hurdle they should go over for the advanced levels but a second chance they get after grade 5 scholarship examination to enter a popular school. Instead, the O-Levels should be given much more importance. The common conception is that O-Levels is much easier than the advanced levels and therefore the gap should be promptly addressed via changes to the curriculum which will automatically give more weight and prominence to the O-Level exam. Secondly, to emphasize the importance of passing the O-Levels, more avenues and opportunities should be affiliated with the O-Level exam other than it being a requirement to follow advanced level in a preferred stream. In Japan, after completing middle school equivalent ordinary level, students can decide whether either to enter high school or to skip it altogether and enter a technical college where they can earn a diploma and start a professional career afterwards, which essentially broadens the higher education and career opportunities beyond completing high schools, which is advanced levels. This diploma also makes students eligible to enter university halfway through undergraduate years, which means they can also earn a university degree without having to complete high school. The O level of course has its cons but that doesn't mean it should be eliminated. Conversely, just because there are some positives to it, it doesn't mean there, are, there isn't any room for improvement. Although free education has created this illusion of equality in opportunities, the competitiveness prompted by limited facilities has made all the major exams in the education systems a means of elimination to not necessarily select the best but to select only the number the system can afford. Educational reforms have been in debate for the longest but these changes are much easier proposed than improved. Implemented. However, if the president is keen on bringing a positive change to the education system, the ordinary level is the most ideal place to start since it not only acts as the bridge between higher and secondary education, but also can serve as a point from where many other avenues of educational and professional opportunities can branch out.